Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. If you are in the market to buy a new car, as I am, but you're just a little bit hesitant, especially as a woman, it can be a bit intimidating. So our next guest says, no worries. She's got the tools you need to be prepared to get the best deal. So grab a pen and paper, and please welcome our resident financial guru, Ms. Janai Thornton. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Yes. It's good to have you back. I'm happy to be back. Thank you, thank you. So buying a new car can be super nerve-wracking as it is. But it's especially nerve-wracking as a woman, especially when she's going alone. Can you talk to us about that? Well, I think we as women, we just haven't been taught to negotiate. Um, we don't feel comfortable negotiating, and I think we just don't know what prepared is. Mm. So we're gonna get everybody prepared today. Yeah, sometimes, you know, as a woman, you walk in and they say, okay, she just wants to flash, she just wants a really cute car, right. thinking that we don't know what we're doing when it comes down to the car buying process. So. Tell us what we should do with this process. Should we shop for a loan before we buy a car or just take what the dealership offers us? Well, you know, I suggest to all people, you want to get your financing before you go to the dealership. You should be fully prepared. So whether you're going to go to your bank or maybe you're going to start a relationship with the credit union now, become a member, you definitely want to take the financing off the table, come there all prepared, ready to go. Oof. Well, what are some of the common mistakes people make when they're shopping for a new automobile? Um, six common mistakes I want to go through. Number one is just not being prepared, doing your research. When you get to the dealership, the only thing that you actually should be doing is closing out your deal. Mm -hmm. All the other research should be done. Number two, don't negotiate your monthly payment. You're negotiating the amount of the car. So a lot of times we're going to say, oh, I can afford $300 a month, $400 a month. And when you say that, you're giving them room to potentially charge you more fees, mm. charge you a higher interest rate. So you want to shop for the cost of the car, not for your payment. Um, another point is a lot of people mix all three negotiations together. You're negotiating the cost of the car, mm -hmm. you're negotiating your trade-in, mm -hmm. and then you're also negotiating your financing. They're three separate, distinct yes. negotiations. Yes, Please don't mix them together. Um, People make the wrong choice between either getting a cash rebate or a lower interest rate. Ooh, which one do you think is best, or is it up to the person, depending on what the situation is? Well, you're only going to get the lower interest rate if you have the credit for yes. that. Yeah, so that <laughs> yes. <laughs> you must have the credit for it. But rebate simply means they're going to actually just charge you a lower price. Mm. So most of the time, I think that's a good idea. You're going to see that now starting late summer, because the 2020s are going to start rolling in pretty soon. Yes. Late summer through fall, you're going to see some really good incentives. So definitely want to look into the rebates. Um, rolling the negative equity forward is a huge mistake. Oh, let's talk about that. We have to sit down and have some tea on this one. What, <laughs> my so, proverbial tea. I mm. know. That's literally, it's just being upside down. So all that means is you owe more on your car than what it's actually worth. And then what happens is you go to the dealership, you know that, you buy a new car, you take that negative equity, you add it on yes. to the new. And so you can never win. you got to pay off that old equity first and then go ahead and buy the new car. So I want people to keep that separate. And then last, what a lot of people never think about is, why don't you rent the car that you want for a couple of days before you actually buy <gasps> That's it? That's a great idea. And you, like better than a five second test drive going around the corner. Absolutely, you need to know what your questions are. Is this really a good fit for you? What is gonna work or not work with you? So I'd make that investment of time and money. Well, should you already know what type of car you want before you go into a dealership? Because you know, I've seen people go from dealership to dealership to dealership looking at cars at that time as opposed to going online first and searching for what type of car they want, like, need, or desire. Right. So how does that work? You need to know before you go, or at least have your choices narrowed down. Make and model, um, doing all your research with consumer reports, you want to be prepared. That's why we're intimidated because we're, we're all over the place versus saying, hey, this is what I know that I want, here are my few choices, now I'm ready to negotiate the price. Okay, so you talked about upside down for a while, and so people, some people, they'll go into a dealership and in order to make uh, the payments that they want for a car, they'll extend their financing, right. uh, financing for an exuberant amount of time. How long should you finance your car? You really don't want to finance for more than five years. And Trina, it's crazy. You can finance for six and seven years now. What? But the, <laughs> the problem with doing that is you put yourself in a position where you're always, always going to have a car down. note. Yeah. And you're always going to have a yeah. car note. You're paying so much more for the same car. So you want to stay within that five year time period. So with that, how do you know how much car you can afford? Okay. So that's the, that's the $100 million question. So you, you want to factor in a couple of things. Number one, um, obviously, what is your budget? Right. What is absolutely on your budget? You want to know, you want to factor in everything from maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a big deal depending on the 
on the type of car that you have, that could be very expensive. Yes, you want to yes. factor in the insurance. Um, you want to factor in what down payment can you afford? Mm. You know, what, what monthly payment can you afford? And then last, you want to make sure that all of your debt payments, all of the debt you have, that your student loans, that oh. your credit cards, whatever you have, it should not exceed 36% of your gross income. Mm -hmm. So that's a guide, it's not a rule, just so you can say, hey, can I really afford this? Because paying your credit, paying your car note should not create any stress for you at all. Uh, it shouldn't, but no. uh, for a lot of people it does, <laughs> especially when you have children that you're still paying their car notes. Right. So, uh, <laughs> so you were talking about doing research, doing research. What are some of the apps we can use when we're looking to buy a new car? Okay, so, um, a few apps that people can use that are really good, cars.com mm -hmm. is a great source. Carvana, mm -hmm. you know, that's the new one where you can buy the car, you can keep it for seven days and return it if you choose to. Oh, you can return it? I always thought they just dropped it off and then you're like stuck with the car. You have seven days actually. They have sure a great you app. Just. <laughs> and Kelly Blue Book, which is a must have yes, for yes. all of the information. Those are some really good apps that people can use. Yes. Okay. so. Let's talk about used cars for yeah. a second. Okay. So when you're trying to buy a new car and you already have one that you want to trade in, right. what are some pointers we can use when we're trying to do that? Should we sell the car straight off like they do at some dealerships or should we just go ahead and use that trade off cost when, when purchasing your car? Okay, so for the trade in, it's that's another negotiation that you need to be prepared for. Mm -hmm. So in the best case scenario, you definitely, you want to be able to sell it to someone. Because if you sell it to the dealership, you know they want to give you less because they want to sell it to someone else. So if you can, you definitely want to do that. Um, also with the trade-in, you just want to be informed, what d is my car really worth? Mm -hmm. And when you take it in, you definitely want to make sure that it's really clean, detailed, and even if you have the maintenance records, that is huge. You can prove how well Ooh, you've taken care yeah. of this car and potentially get more money for that too. Oh, you know, I love seeing you. You're just one of my best people, my favorite people in the whole entire world. And I, <laughs> for real, you have no idea. We thank you so very much. And guess what, everybody? When you are ready to buy a new car, you know, happy car shopping. And then there are more tips like these that yes. you can always follow with Janai at, uh, what's your Instagram, Janai? I'm at Janai Thornton. <laughs> you heard it from her. So